My name is Maggie. I am a web and graphic designer from the Philadelphia area. Today, we are going to explore why we would want to clone a website and how would we go about doing this. Let's begin with the why. Why would we want to clone a website or portions of a website? Through cloning a website, we can copy, we can view the code associated with that website. This can be a great starting point for designers and developers. From here, we can modify and develop a website without having to write the code from scratch. Cloning portions of a website really can be a great starting point. We are not encouraging you to just go and copy an entire website and call it your own. We always want to be cognizant of plagiarism, copyright issues, and IP theft. So how do we go about cloning a website? There are a lot of different ways. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Chrome development tools, and we're going to see that they are a great resource to inspect the code and to clone and copy all of the code or just pieces of the code. Let's try it out. We come to Codecademy's platform and we find tortoiseshell optics. This project is a responsive design web building project. So I take a closer look at the finished project and I want to find the finished code. I select one of the elements, do a right click, a control click and choose inspect. Here I have opened Google Chrome development tools. On the top, I can see the HTML. As I scroll through, I can see the different sections of my page from my header all the way down to the footer. As I select my different elements, I can also see the CSS. Here I see the CSS for the footer and for the item with the class of container. I can see the max width, the margins, information on the background color. I can choose different elements and take a closer look at the CSS. I can change the color if I'd like to. When we change the color, these changes will only be when reviewing them. Once we refresh our page, these changes will go away. We know that if we gave everyone the ability to change the look of a website, that this wouldn't work. But we can, from the Google Chrome development tools, copy the code and use it on our local hard drive on our computer, or we could take it and clone it and use it in a different project. As I move through the Chrome development tools, I can see that I have the option to open the file. When I choose open file, I'm going to see all of the files that are associated with this page. I know that the CSS for this page is styles.css. I could select all of this CSS and copy it and put it into my text editor and use the CSS. If I wanted to find the index.html, if I wanted to find the HTML, I would type in index. And for this project, this will bring me to the HTML for this landing page, tortoise shell optics. Again, I could copy and paste this HTML and put it on my computer and use it in my text editor. Now let's come to a website like Twitter. Let's say that we wanted to clone, we wanted to use some of the HTML, the CSS, the JavaScript that is accompanying this page. And we can clone some of the features from this site. I come to the about page and I see that I have this feature, what's happening in the world and what people are talking about right now. Again, what I can do is I can select this heading and I can do a control click or a right click and inspect the element. And this will open up Google Chrome development tools. As I take a closer look, I can see the HTML and the accompanying CSS with this page. When I take a closer look at the CSS, I see the name of the CSS sheet associated with this page. I see that this line is wrapped in an H1 tag and that it has the class of live type, masthead, headline, type, bold, 36, color, neutral, white. 
As I scroll down, I can locate the JavaScript files associated with this site and open these files to find the code associated with the JavaScript features on this page. I am going to open content.js and about-home.js. Once I open these files, I can clone the code for the features of this site for the features of that element on the page. As we take a closer look at a website like Twitter, we're going to find that there will be a lot of pages associated with this website, as well as a lot of code. We use tortoiseshell optics as our first example because it was a very simple website with a CSS sheet and an HTML sheet. As we get into more robust sites like Twitter, we'll find that there will be more files associated with this page. Let's take a look at how we would copy the source code for a site like Twitter. I open up Google Chrome Development Tools and I can see all of the HTML for this page. I'm going to click Sources and then I'll see the HTML one more time and now I can select it and copy it. I can see that there is an awful lot of lines of HTML with Twitter's site. Once I have it all selected, I'll choose Edit Copy. I come to a text editor of my choice. Now I have actually created a folder on my computer and named it 01 Twitter. I'm going to come to File, New, and I am going to paste the HTML into this sheet. I'm going to save as index.html. Now let's get the CSS. I can come to Elements and I see the CSS in the middle of my Chrome Development Tools. I can click main.css1 and in the source I see the code here. Now it looks like there's just one line, but I'm going to find that there's an awful lot of information here and that the code has gotten a bit jumbled. So I'm going to copy all of this code. As I move around, I can see that I have selected all of the CSS. Again, I'll choose Edit Copy, and I'll come back to my text editor, and I'll create my CSS sheet. I'll come to File, New, and I'm going to paste my CSS. My CSS has come in very jumbled. I'm not going to worry about that right now though. I'm going to come File, Save As, and I'm going to give it the name of main.css. I'll hit Save. Now I'm going to come back to my index.html and I'm going to come to the head of this document. I want to make sure that I set the path to link main.css to the local file on my computer. As I take a closer look too, I can see the name of the JavaScript files that are attached to Twitter's website. I'm focusing on the CSS right now. So I'm going to come on in and again, I will not have this path that is located now in href. I come to File, Save, and let's take a look and see what we have. To the left of my computer, I have the path to the file index.html that is on my computer, the local project. And to the right, I can see that I am actually on Twitter's web page. Let's compare the two. I start coming down. And as I take a closer look, I can see the different pieces that are not there. I can see that the color has traveled. My type has traveled. What I have begun to do is build out the structure, the HTML and the CSS. And as I take a closer look, I can see the different features where I'll need the JavaScript. Let's take a look at editing some of the HTML and the CSS. So if I was using this project and building a website based on Twitter's design, I might begin right with the nav bar. As I take a closer look at my header, I can see that I have my nav icon and that I come into my nav menu. I can come to the first part within the span tags that says, let's go Twitter. I am going to change this. I'm going to type, let's clone. 
I can see all of the different things that I'd want to come in and change. But for this video, we're just going to scratch the surface. Let's save and preview. I refresh and I've changed it to Let's Clone. As I start looking around the source code of a site like Twitter, there is a lot of information there. So I will take it piece by piece. I want to change a bit of the background color and as I scroll through, I know that there are multiple background colors. I am going to use the development tools one more time to figure out what part of the CSS I am going to target. So I open back up Twitter. I have twitter.com and then I have the copied source code that's on my computer. I want to figure out what this background color, what the class name is for the CSS of this background color. So again, I'm going to do a control click and I'm going to inspect this element. And as I come in, I can see on main.css that the rule is background color dark blue. Let me change this color. Let's go for pink. What I could do as well is I could actually copy this line right here with the change that I have made. I am going to come to edit copy. Now I'm going to come back to my text editor. I am going to take this rule and create another CSS sheet. I'm going to name this sheet child.css. I'm going to paste this rule here and come to file save as child.css. I'm going to put my rules on a separate sheet. This way I can keep the code better organized. I'm going to come back to my index.html and make sure that this CSS sheet is also attached. I'm going to select the line of code that has main.css linked for the CSS. I'm going to come after that line of code and I'm going to paste. I will change the link to child.css. I need to make sure that I put my second CSS sheet below main.css. This way, the new rules that I'm making will override the rules in main.css. I come to File, Save All, and I'll preview again. To the left, I have the index.html that is on my computer, that is in the local folder, and to the right, Twitter's website that's live on the web. I've made two very basic changes to this website. And we familiarized ourselves with how we go about finding the source code and copying and pasting it to a folder on our computer. You may be interested in recreating a site and not cloning it. If so, check out our video on going from a design to a website. This video focused primarily on HTML and CSS. Subscribe to Codecademy's YouTube channel for videos on replicating JavaScript functionality from web pages. Thanks for watching. This was Maggie with Codecademy. Join the conversation by subscribing or dropping a comment below. And if you would like to take your skills to the next level, join Codecademy today. Thanks so much.